Well. Sometimes a guy just can't win for anything, no matter how hard he tries or how much money he spends. Welcome back. If you haven't seen my videos before, I'm Ross the Oliver Man, and today we are going to learn some things. I am going to show you what has happened to me while working on this 60, which is a four-speed 60 on steel wheels. There's other videos about it. If you haven't seen those, check them out. But one of the things that it was missing was the arms off of this uh, mechanical lift shaft. So, no big deal, right? There's lots of tractors out there, lots of 60s and 70s. And I thought it would be no trouble to find that. So I got a hold of my good buddy, that Oliver guy, Chris Losey, and we talked a little bit on the phone, and he went out back into the parts yard, and he found me these arms that he pulled off of a tractor that should work. But when you put them on, uh-oh, they're way too big. And this is a problem, because why is this? If you hold these up to a 60, they seem to be the same size. But then when you do some closer investigation, there were in fact multiple variations of this arm. And so that's what I'm going to show you here, what I've figured out so far. So, when you look at the parts book for the 60, power lift is number 18, and we'll scroll down to number 18. It says, lever, power lift, B150 or 1504B, and B, the prefix B, means that it should fit the 70. So that's what we pulled this arm off of, you know, should be the same thing. Like I talked about in that video with the pulleys, whatever the part was used on first, it got assigned a part number that had something to do with that. So in this case, B meant it was for the 70. So, you look at the serial number range, though, 600,001 to 603,161, and that is where it comes into play. So, this tractor should be in this serial number range because it has the power lift that takes this style arm, which, when measured, it is... I'll show you how to find how I figured that out in a minute. But anyway, if you scroll down farther... The later ones used this arm, C1504A, which is what this one is that we got uh, off of that other tractor. You can see it even has a C on it, C1504A. Okay, so what the heck? Why did they do this, and, you know, what's going on? So neither one of us had really encountered this before or thought much about it, so I dug through the parts books, and I discovered something else. Well, when you go to the shaft on this one, it tells us that the H1503B shaft is inch and an eighth diameter, and then the next one down says inch and three-eighths diameter. So that explains the two different sizes. But then it begs the question, what the heck is going on? So I went back to the 70 parts book because the 70 was made for many more years and this is when it gets much more interesting so we go to number eight here and we need to go up to the first number eight b 1504a a different part number than the one that was the first revision on the 60. So after digging on the internet, I managed to find this. This is a B1504A arm. 
No doubt this was more on the like heart par 70s, the earliest ones. And when you look at this one, it is a smooth shaft with a keyway. Whereas all your later ones are tapered splines. So that makes me think I can kind of see their progression of what may be happened. Heart par 70 comes out. They make these arms, no big deal. We got a shaft with a key, but the action of slamming the cultivator down all the time probably took its toll on this. Kept shearing keys or maybe breaking arms. So they thought, okay, we will switch from this and we will go to a spline shaft. So that's what you have here. This is the same size shaft as what this would be, you know, it's except it doesn't have the cuts for the splines. So this is a smaller hole than the later ones, is what I'm getting at. So this is inch and an eighth spline, and they probably went with that for a while. But then still, the cultivator action slamming to the ground, maybe even when you're going down a road, unlike the five-speed 60s, that jar would cause these to fail, maybe. And then another thing I thought of is, since they are listed, the other style that should fit this tractor that looks like this, uh, they're listed in the 70 parts book. It makes me think that, well, maybe when they went to the mounted corn pickers, which you could get on those tractors, maybe that's when these arms started to fail, so they beefed it up. So if we go back to this parts book, there was the 1504A, which is smooth bore with a keyway. Then we go here, the B1504B, which is the exact same part number that should be on this 60 that fits the inch and an eighth shaft. Then we scroll down even more in this, and it tries to make me select a dealer because I didn't do that yet. Uh, let's see here. Let's get to the right one because some of these part numbers are levers with, uh, what am I trying to say? They come with the bolt, see? So we don't want that one. We want just the regular, there it is. I went down too far. C, 1504A. And that is what we have here, which is the later one. And consequently, it remained like this, unchanged until the end, because the 88 has the same part number, except they put a one in front of it. 1C1504A. And... Uh, you don't have to take my word for on it. Let's go to the uh, 88 parts book here, and I will show you what we've learned here. 88, and we will go down to, where are you? Mechanical power lift, row crop. And when we zoom in on number 14, it's 1C1504A. So the same part number as what this one is, C1504A, except they put a one in front of it. So till the end of production, it was this style arm. So there were at least three variations of these arms. I have two and I need the third one. So if somebody out there has a, it would be a B1504B with inch and an eighth splines. I really could use a pair for this 60 because that's what it's supposed to have. So just for fun, we will take this over to a Fleetline tractor and compare. Oh, can we get our fat self in? So here is a later 70. And as you can see, that is exactly what we have here. Same arm. So it fits that. And I know it does because it came off a 70. But then when you come over here, it's the exact same on the Fleetline tractor. So that's your difference in uh, there's two, at least two sizes of splined arm and then there's a smooth bore arm for the earlier 70s. So once again, like I said, there are th at least three different variations. B1504A, the B1504B, which I don't have, and the C1504A. And like I said, if anybody's got that missing one, a pair of them, I could really use it for this tractor. But it just goes to show that no matter how long you've been around these things, you can always learn something new. 
so it's it would be interesting to go back in time and talk to the engineers and see why you know they did what they did but like i said i assume that there was failures with these because of the keyway maybe possibly looking at it this arm because they kind of made a cutout in it maybe that was a weak point and it failed you know this one they beefed up the end you can tell so who knows but i would say it most definitely was brought on by uh traveling on higher road speeds versus just uh in the soft dirt out there so that's who knows we'll never know but if you're looking to restore one before you do what i do and you just keep buying the wrong ones again and again now you know so you don't do that consequently i bought this pair just so that i could make this video because i thought this was a worthy noteworthy thing to point out and how many people have a pair of these probably not many so i've got two pairs that don't fit hopefully i will get to find the one that does fit and make a little bit of progress on my steel wheel 60 here well as always if you enjoy the videos go ahead and give them a thumbs up and uh, leave a comment and subscribe if you haven't already all that stuff helps out the channel and uh, i'll keep making videos that have oliver and white tractors in them as always thank you for watching and i'll see you in the next one